Hello, my name is Giddy, and I'm talking to you from, from Ambala Mode on the North Illinois, and again, it's Nova Scotia. And uh, this time of the evening, um, uh, the sun has just gone down, and in the Gaelic mind, this is a time when um, the, you, the veil between this world and the next world is at its thinnest. And, uh, if something supernatural was going to happen, these, these are the times. So it's kind of an appropriate time to talk about this, which is a uh, little talk about uh, the folklore involved in the Gaelic other world and that. So uh, anyhow, the same as the day is divided into light and dark in the 24 hours, and you've got two periods within that when you're going between dark and light and light and dark, right, which is in the morning, uh, when it's getting bright out, but before the sun has has risen, and uh, this time after the sun went down, but it's still light out. These are the liminal times, and um, these are are when um, ones can pass from one side to the next kind of thing. It's the the times that that are the thinnest, as people would say. Um, and uh, these beliefs are really, really old, and we still have them um, kind of in fragments and in remnants today. Um, even if people are Christian um, or whatever other faiths, and if they're Gales, this stuff is kind of ancient stuff that's in the background. So the same as the day is divided that way, so is the year. And uh, we're in one of the um, most special Gaelic months is in Caston, May, you often hear it referenced in poetry because uh, it's a time when there's renewal and lots of life and uh, the next month is going to be the young month, Anthog Vias, which is uh, June, right, with all this new growth as well. Um, this is part of the Gaelic mind of how they would look at the year in that uh, it's roughly a ha half a year across from Halloween, right? And if you look at November 1st and May 1st, they mark the two times in the Gaelic mind when we're making that transition between light and dark and uh, life and death and that going either way. So at this time of the year, um, this is kind of halfway through our year. In the Gaelic mind, uh, and it used to be with other European peoples as well, when the sun would disappear, that's when tomorrow starts. So if you look at um, All Hallows' Eve, right, it's the evening of All Hallows' Day. All Hallows' Day was Christianized. Um, it was sowing, the, the ancient uh, Celtic holiday, and uh, it, it was Christianized to remember all Saints on that day, All Hallows. Um, anyhow, the same with this time of the year, May the 1st is a very important day, but the day would begin going into the darkness first, going into the colder time. Same with our year. Our year begins with going into darkness and cold and death. And then halfway through that year, you come out into light and warmth and life. You can hear the, the birds going there. Um, so all of these things have, have uh, put a bearing in, in Gaelic mind. Those two times of the years, those are the times when, um, look at Halloween, you've got to protect yourself that um, the um, any evil spirits or spirits of the dead who want revenge on you or anything like that, you've got to put a mask on and that. You've got to disguise yourself so that they don't, they don't see you. As, as I say, these are old old, old beliefs. Um, and in this time of the year, they would be um, on guard as well because they were going to put their cattle away from their homesteads so that they could grow gardens and crops and that. And they'd be putting the cattle out and a lot of the young people would go with them to the pastures far, far out in the mountains and that. And they'd stay there until possibly the six months. That'd be going to the sheeling, they'd call it. And um, when they'd, to make sure, certain that the cattle uh, were healthy and blessed, and this would be really ancient, they'd have at least one fire, and they'd drive the cattle 
through the smoke of that fire, or they'd have two bonfires and drive the cattle through through there. Um, a retention of that, uh, of the intention of that, you'd find in Gaelic Nova Scotia among Catholic communities and in Catholic tradition that on May, the morning of May the first, May Day, what we felt in the lucky day of of uh, May, um, Catholics would go around with holy water and bless all the rooms in their house, bless each other, bless around the homes, bless new buildings, bless all the animals, except for the pig for, for uh, Gaelic reasons and that. Um, and that would be ancient in beliefs as well. Um, anyhow, what are these things on the other side? And what, what are these things that in some places, in some houses with some individuals in that? Um, where the veil is thinner and that. Well, uh, all kinds of people have their own beliefs of, of uh, monsters and, uh, and supernatural creatures and that, and the Gales are no exception. So we're not into vampires, we're not into so much skeletons chasing you around and that, uh, animated skeletons and that. Uh, werewolves, not so much either. But one thing with Gales is that you have that other world influence uh, and it beca can be coming in through your spirituality, it can be coming in through your faith and that, but it's, it's part of your everyday life and that and it's part of the filter of how you see this world all the time. It's kind of in the, in the background whispering to you about, like giving you a feeling about a, a, a situation and that, how you should perceive it, how you should act in that day. And, and we get this stuff through stories and we get it through uh, the older people before us that have passed it on, like very much like the Aboriginal people and that. So uh, when we talk about Gaelic spooks and that, um, people often um, put Bach and, and Ghost together. And it's not quite a great uh, matchup. Bach and is better with spook because often it's Bach and is one, Bach in more than one. And uh, often there's no ghost involved. It's, it's lights that people have been seeing for 40 years or something. It's, um, it's sounds, right? So with the lights, um, people have been seeing lights trailing through this woods, sets of lights for, for years. And then uh, there's a story down Sydney Way of two children went missing. And they once were out with flashlights and that. And looking to find them and they unfortunately the children drowned but that's the lights that people were seeing for like 40 years or so beforehand that's that's an example of a bargain bargain also has to do with not just seeing or hearing it's it's a feeling that goes with it it's the whole the whole show kind of thing um something like that would happen and you'd realize right and you'd you'd have that like the 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 um, they would be thin at that time as far as any doubt is there things other than this world on the other side in that day. Um, anyhow, uh, sounds you would hear in families where you had carpenters. Um, my great grandfather was a carpenter and um, he made 35 caskets for people around his community. Uh, his son, my granduncle, told me that. And uh, he was from Craigness Rear. And anyhow, um, there'd be forerunners with that. And um, this carpenter, my, my great grandfather, great, yeah, great, great grandfather, Sandy and Fathery, um, his daughter told me that when she was small, her and her sister were sharing a bed. And his tools, carpenter's tools, were under the bed. And uh, she, they heard all of this racket, and I forget whether it was that she said it was the just the tools rattling, or whether it was the sounds of hammering and sawing. You'll get that in stories as well. And she said they were petrified. And I said, why didn't you jump in with your grandparents? And, and, and uh, she said, uh, oh no, we were more afraid of, of him. How cross he'd be. Don't be so crazy jumping in bed in that day. But, uh, yeah, you get it in families, you get it in, in individuals. Um, some people had and that held in Gaelic, it's the two sights, the two views, right? Once again, you're seeing both worlds at the same time, you're seeing a blend. 
and that runs in, in, in uh, individuals and that in, supposedly can be passed on from individual to individual and that means that this is going to go on the internet, I'm not going to say how and that and not, and not that I have any personal experience. Um, but I do have personal experience with um, uh, the, the Gaelic other world and that. It's hard not to believe it if, if you've experienced some things yourself and that. And especially when it was uh, very honest people that were telling you about that. Um, so back to the Bachin. Um, it might be that they're hearing something at the same time every evening within a house, somebody walking upstairs or something like that, when they know there's nobody there. Um, lights on in a house when people aren't living there on that day. And also you get lots of stories when we were growing up. There's lots of stories of, of Andrachid, the bad fellow, um, being around. And uh, you, you'd be careful that you'd keep up in your prayers and go to confession and, and, uh, and walk the straight line kind of thing because uh, the, the bad ones would be waiting close close by enough. And, and we grew up, honest to God, after hearing stories and all that, that we were worried going out on our own at night of it, ghosts and of the bad fellow we're not supposed to be say, saying his name in that day. Um, anyhow, the individuals who had and the Hewag, the second site. Um, I think that that came more in, in levels as well, that you'll hear a lot of stories in Scotland of ones that uh, would, uh, they'd see funeral processions coming, so everybody, men carrying the casket and the procession of people behind them and that, and they'd have a pretty good guess when they were looking at who was there, um, who it was that, that was, in the casket on that day, if, when they look at the funeral party, party, and they'd have to step off of the road if somebody's with them to take them off. And if they wanted, if that other person wanted to see it, like I said, there was a method where they could kind of extend the vision to them. But most people didn't want to get that. Um, over here, you you hear less of that. Although I did hear of a gentleman from my community, Ian Mordvik, of McKechen. Um, that he I, I obviously would see the thought or he'd see the funeral processions and that. So he's he's um, a gentleman who would have been old, probably in the 30s maybe or something, uh, 30s or 40s. And uh, and he was seeing the funeral processions and that. And you got to realise, in our traditions, they're very much like you'd get in, um, in Scotland and Ireland and that. Um, I'm going to leave it there for this evening and maybe tomorrow evening around the same time we can get back and talk a bit more or maybe it'll be early at this time but um, I'm planning on giving you a few stories and examples of, of the Gaelic other world and um, hope you enjoy. Uh, I guess one could be sure